Some economists say the world is entering a second machine age. Artificial intelligence and other advancements enabling robots to do tasks that until now only human eyes, minds, and hands could handle. For this episode of Moving Upstream, we traveled through Asia to meet the next generation of industrial robots, where robots are making robots. Wow. Well, they're making love for these robots. Keep making babies. <laughs> yes, right. To see how they're changing manufacturing yeah. and whether they're sealing the fate of low-skill workers. Every other year, Tokyo plays host to the world's largest robotics trade show, IREX. It's no coincidence the show is in Asia. Here, robots are being bought and sold in numbers unrivaled anywhere else in the world. These are the types of robots Professor Eric Benjolfsson is keeping an eye on as MIT's chief scholar on the digital economy. We used to have to really painstakingly teach the machines step by step, program them what to do, and now machine learning is enabling the machines to figure out on their own how to solve problems. You put together the algorithms, the data, and the computer chips, and you get sometimes a million-fold improvement in the performance of a these A million-fold improvement? Yeah. And what does that allow you to do? So one really important thing to do on the factory floor is just be able to recognize objects, and that's something that only humans could do well until recently. At IREX, we witnessed a robot handling a task that I, as a human, don't do so well, futzing with one of those pesky tape dispensers. It's among the latest offerings from Yaskawa, one of the world's largest manufacturers of industrial robots. Its main sellers are large industrial robots that do dangerous things like welding car parts. We visit one of Yaskawa's robot manufacturing facilities in the southern port city of Kitakyushu. Here, the public can try controlling and racing against AI-enhanced robot arms. You're done. We got to see where the robots are made. The robots themselves, they're sealed off by these plastic barriers. The workers aren't allowed to be in there while they're in operation because they're making these very fast movements. The head of the robotics division at Yasukawa Masahiro Ogawa seems most excited to talk about robots that don't need to be walled off from humans, that work alongside employees. In the industry, they're called cobots. The International Federation of Robots predicts in coming years, cobots will lead the robotics industry. That's partially with driving startups like China-based Elephant Robotics to get in the game. He uh, hit people, so it was just stop. Yeah. So work with people. Yeah, works yeah. with people. Yeah. We asked their founder, Ju Yi Song, how his cobot is different from traditional robot arms. It moves not that quick and it is very, um, I mean, very light. Okay. So it can work with people. So this is the most important thing. In addition to being safer, the collaboration proves to be more productive. A study conducted by MIT researchers found that human-machine groups were more efficient than teams wholly comprised of one or the other. They also reduced human idle time by 85%. While traveling through Japan, we visited Huistenbosch, a Holland-themed amusement park. There we checked out its latest attraction, a robot restaurant. How many okonomiyaki pancakes can the robot make in an hour? My colleague Matt McDonald, after getting a robot mixed cocktail, Kanpai. tried the robot chef's signature dish. え、特に若い人たちの人口がこれからどんどん減っていく。ま、これがもう目に見えて迫ってる状況ですから、じゃあいかに効率的にあの、このレストランのオペレーションが Yeah, it's gimmicky. By design. Back at Yasukawa, Ogawa tells us most of the customers who come to him looking for new automation solutions come from China. China market huge and the growth ratio very high. How high? 
Last year, Chinese demand for robots grew more than 20%. One reason for that is China's working population is aging. By 2060, the average Chinese citizen is projected to be 50 years old. To see the impact of industrial robots on manufacturing in China, we traveled to an area that's considered the electronics capital of the world, the Pearl River Delta region. Headquartered there is Rapu, China's largest keyboard and mice manufacturer. We asked the CEO why his company is making the move towards robotics. Uh, because uh, in China have a rapid uh, salary increase beginning from 2008. So we feel the, the little pressure for, uh, from the labor side. So we decided to change a lot our manufacturing system to robot. Wages for the average urban employee in China have more than doubled since 2008. Rapu, he says, in the past few years, used robotics to reduce its factory workforce from 2,500 people to now 1,000. And more automation is on the way. So you're bringing more robots in? Yeah, and then make the, even the logistics will use a robot. You seem very happy about this. I yeah, 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 because it will make my company more competitive in the, in the field. And you're not worried when, when you lay off those 700 workers? No, no, no they, they can easily get jobs, no problem. China's unemployment rate is 4.6%, pretty low. And the Chinese government says it's even lower in urban areas. Most of them are getting jobs. They're not yeah, having yeah, to yeah. go back to the farm. They cannot go back. And, and right they can't now, go back? No, but they can go back, but for them, it's no meaning to go back because they will easily find another job because China is growing very fast. When we talk to CEOs in China, do you think they're being forthright? Do you think they're being accurate? Broadly, I think they are. I think that there are going to be lots and lots of jobs that are automated, millions, hundreds of millions of jobs that won't be needed because robots will do them. But there's no shortage of work that only humans can do. Indeed, in China, the category of jobs that are growing fastest are in the service sector. Is there any resistance from workers to putting these new robots in? Uh, no, because uh, they have no choice. Your plant that you oversee has already been automated 80%, you said. Do you see it going the rest of that 20%? Li Zhendu, a worker at the Rapu factory, has watched as robots have replaced his colleagues. How, how far off do you think we are from, from full automation? Nobody, so nobody left working in your department? Chinese delivery company JD is showing how automation is advancing in other industries like logistics. There are still some employees here, but not at a JD sorting center near Shanghai. It's taking nearly all humans out of this process. And this is the same company that last year began making drone deliveries. This is a moment of choice and opportunity. It could be the best 10 years ahead of us that we've ever had in human history, or one of the worst, because we have more power than we've ever had before. The tools by themselves are not going to lift up the billions of people who are being left behind. Those are conscious choices we have to make as a society and as individuals. In just six years, worldwide sales of industrial robots have risen more than 140%. What do you think about robots taking on more work? We look forward to reading your comments. Thanks for watching.